There we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Magdalena Newman, and I am the lead for the BC Support Unit Fraser Center, uh, which is a partnership between Fraser Health Authority and the Simon Fraser University. Um, and we have the honor of being your moderators for the day, myself and the rest of my team. I'd like to introduce my co-moderator co for this morning, Radley Nagra, who is our patient engagement specialist. Thank you. Um, before we get underway with this morning's speakers, I'd like to run through the, uh, um, the day's agenda um, and to let you know a little bit about how the day has been organized. So we are using a conference app this year for the first time. If you haven't done so already, feel free to go to Apple or Google Play uh, Store and download the app. It's called Putting Patients First 2019. Um, we also have a Twitter hashtag, so please tweet out throughout the day. The hashtag is hashtag PPF19. PPF19 stands for Putting Patients First. And you'll see some folks around the room and uh, just around the conference today wearing uh, buttons that say, ask me. So if you have any questions about anything, feel free to uh, go up to uh, someone with the tag and ask them. Okay, thanks. Perfect. All right, so starting things off, we are starting in the main ballroom here today. And then after our morning plenary session around 11 a.m., we'll be moving to our breakout sessions. Uh, as you pick your breakout sessions, please be mindful that the morning sessions are not offered in the afternoon, so they're only offered once. And throughout uh, the morning and the afternoon, all the agenda items and the list of breakout sessions are on your app and also in the conference booklet, so please check those out. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is during the breakout sessions, this ballroom will be reconfigured into two separate rooms. So please be sure to take all your items with you to your breakout sessions. And if there's anything else that you want us to store for you, let one of the registration folks know and they'll be able to help you with that. At noon, lunch will be served out in the foyer. Uh, we welcome you to bring your lunch back into this room to sit and network with those at your table. Uh, and at one o'clock, we will get started once again with uh, our uh, plenary speaker for the afternoon, Jennifer Johansson. And she'll be speaking to us about ethical implications of engaging patients in research. There will be a discussion period as well following the talk, and we will have a break uh, from 2 to 2.30. At 2.30, we'll be going back to the breakout session format. Um, so please select one of four sessions to attend in the afternoon. At 3.35, uh, we welcome you to come back to this room, and we'll have a final panel on the topic of ethical considerations in patient-oriented research. Following the panel discussion, there will be a wine and cheese reception. I hope you can join us for that. It will take place in the foyer from 4.35 to 6 p.m. Um, and more networking opportunities uh, will be available at that time. Um, a little note about posters for this year. We've got 18 posters available. Uh, they are in an electronic format this year. Um, they are also in uh, kiosks, kiosks in the foyer um, and also in Caulfield and Hollyburn rooms. Each presenter has an allocated time and slot in kiosk. Um, so look for those in the agenda, uh, for those details. They're page 38 on, in the booklet and uh, also available in the app. Unfortunately, posters P2 and P7 have withdrawn from the conference, so they are no longer part of the agenda. Um, I would really encourage you to go and have a look at the posters because they're really great examples of what patient-oriented research is happening in the province and elsewhere. And we also really encourage you to vote for your favorite. Um, ballots are included in your name tags. And all you have to do is color in the number of the poster that is your favorite on the, um, in the ballot. Ballot boxes will be at the registration desk. And uh, they'll be there around until 6 p.m. So following, uh, or until the end of the, uh, the reception. 
top poster will be announced following the conference, so it won't be announced today because we need to tally the votes. Um, they will be announced by social media on our website and through our newsletter. Um, if you haven't already signed up for the BC Support newsletter, you may want to do that. Um, thank you. All right. Uh, some additional housekeeping items. Uh, please visit the exhibitors that we have today for all of you, and they're all affiliated with BC Support Unit in some capacity. Uh, you're welcome to visit them during the breakout sessions, between the breaks, and during lunch. They're located in the conference foyer. Washrooms are located off the foyer near the registration desk. Uh, presenter bios are available in the conference program and in the app, so you're well aware. The Wi-Fi code, of course, if you have not um, found out yet, the meeting space is, um, the conference meeting space is support unit, all lowercase. For those of you tweeting conference uh, proceedings today, please use the hashtag PPF19 and be sure to follow or tag BC support unit in your tweets. If you find during the day that you need to have a little bit of a quiet space, uh, you're welcome to use the back part of the Shaughnessy Salon, which is across the hallway uh, from this ballroom. Of course, if you need to stand up, walk, and stretch, feel free to do that. Uh, in the front, of, front part of the Shaughnessy Salon, two of our wonderful patient partners are recording their podcasts. We have our Fraser Center patient partner, Bev Palmeroy, and our Island patient partner, Lisa Richway, who will be interviewing conference participants. So if you want to stop by and say hello, feel free to do that. And last but not least, I think we're talking about uh, phones. We all have them. Uh, just be mindful of um, putting the ringer off. Thank you. And before I introduce our first speaker, or the, our first um, guest for the day, I just wanted to also emphasize one more time to please tweet out if you're on Twitter. Um, last year we were one of the highest uh, tweeting events in the country, so uh, please help make us uh, one of the highest, or if not the highest for today. Um, and now I'd like to invite Leslie Bryant up to introduce um, Elder Roberta Price, who will be doing the morning uh, prayer and welcome. Leslie Bryant is uh, the lead for uh, Indigenous engagement uh, in the Interior Center. Thank you. No applause needed. Um, I was just reflecting at the table with um, Elder Roberta and uh, the best thing, one of the best things besides maybe my kids being born happened to me in this very room a year ago when I got to meet this amazing lady. And um, I've been badgering her ever since. <laughs> uh, we recruited her to work with a couple of elders from the uh, Okanagan Nation, the South Nation, up where I live on their territory. And um, we created, um, they created a workshop called Planting the Seeds. Um, maybe some of you had the opportunity to attend um, when we offered it here in the spring. Um, our next offering is at UBC Okanagan in January. Um, Miss Elder Roberta Price is a very special woman. Um, she is an adjunct professor at UBC in the Family Medicine Program. She's a co-investigator on multiple research projects. Hopefully she's going to be a published author shortly. And um, she, it's my just tremendous pleasure and honor to um, welcome her up here to welcome us to her, her territory as a um, Coast Salish Snanamo, Snanamo, sorry, and Cowichan woman. I forgot the most important part. Um, mother of four and grandmother of eight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, my dear. Thanks so much, Leslie, and to our beautiful hosts that started off our day. And I want to 
Thank each and every one of you who have heard my welcome. May it be forever emblazoned on your heart, and you could follow me word for word sometimes. OCM, thank you. Haichka, Haichka, OCM, Siaya. Greetings and welcome, everyone. As Co Salish Matriarch and Elder, I wish to give a very warm thank you to all my relatives on the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh for welcoming me to live in the unceded lands of my relatives, Musqueam in Richmond, for 40 years now. As Coast Salish Matriarch and Elder, I wish to give each and every one of you a very warm welcome who live, work, and play and visit in our unceded, ancestral, and occupied lands of my relatives, Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh. Ceremony, ceremony guided each and every step of each and every day of our lives as taught to me by my elders. I have in my hand these cedar boughs as taught to me by my elders. We would pick those cedar boughs each and every morning. We would go into that cold, cold water. What we are doing is ceremony. We are brushing every single part of our bodies off with those cedar boughs. What we are doing is a cleansing. We are pushing all the negative and evil energy off of us so we could go about our day in a good and respectful way. I've been going into classrooms here in the Lower Mainland for 34 years now, talking about First Nations. I'll share the exercise with each and every one of you this morning that I share with those beautiful children right from the preschool age right up into university to share with you the meaning of negative energy. And I'll ask each and every one of you to participate with Elder Roberta this morning. Raise your hand, folks, if you've ever felt a cranky moment in your life. Feel free to raise two. <laughs> that, my dear friends, is the meaning of negative energy. Can you do things really well when you are cranky? Uh-uh. Maybe extra hard, maybe extra fast, but not really well. So brushing all that negative energy off of you in that cold, cold water each and every morning will help you go about your day in a good and respectful way. Part of the power of the sacred cedar boughs, when you use them in ceremony, puts a protective force around you that will constantly deflect that negative energy off of you as you go about your day. Other important ceremony as taught to me by my elders is the ceremony of introduction to share your name, your nation, your family. And if it isn't your traditional territory, to always respectfully ask permission to be on that territory. Always gracefully wait for that permission to be granted. I'll share that with you now. Good morning, everyone. My name is Roberta Price. My heritage is I am Coast Salish. I am Snanima on my dad's side. That's where I was born. When they came to our lands, they couldn't say our names. They couldn't say our language. So perhaps when they couldn't say Snanima, they called it Nanaimo. So I was born there right on the number one reserve on the waterfront in Nanaimo and I am Cowichan on my mom's side. The dialect of the language of my people is taught to me by my elders on this side of the water, way up there in the Stalo territory, my beautiful, beautiful Chilliwack elders. The dialect of the language of my people is called the Halkamilum language. I knew and understood and spoke my language fluently until I was six years old. Beyond six years old, I was not allowed to have anything to do with my language, my heritage, and my culture. And I was actually tortured about that. 
I have spent well over 40 years reclaiming back my identity, searching out for my family, especially searching for my mother. Very, very pleased and proud to finally find my mom when I became a grandmom in 1994. I was able to spend eight years with my mother before she passed away. My mother affirming all the teachings of all the elders that I work with. Felt they were stepping stones to my mother. She'd say, yep, yeah, that's the way we do that cultural teaching. Yep, yeah, that's the way we do that ceremony. I share with you that due to those horrific experiences from age six onwards, for many, many, many years, I use the contemporary Western method of healing, counseling in psychiatry and psychology. But I really felt the greatest part of my healing journey came. I call this dear, beautiful lady a friend today. My dear friend Flo is 84 this year. My dear friend Flo was my boss in the early 80s. My dear friend Flo spent her entire life in the residential school. My dear friend Flo was also helper to the elders. She knew what I needed. She brought me to those elders. Those elders, they took me under their wing. They taught me. They guided me. They prayed for me. But mostly importantly of all, what those elders did for me is they loved me. They loved me unconditionally, unconditionally. Because when you are ripped away from your family, age three, four, five, six, and older, what you are missing is that unconditional love you receive from your parents, your grandparents, your family, your nation, your community. That unconditional love, they gave it to me openly. They gave it to me lovingly. Never ever did I dream for one moment at that time that close to 40 years later, I would be walking in those elders' footsteps today sharing that same unconditional love with so many in so many communities. We still need it. We still need it very, very much. I hold my hands up in thanks to those beautiful elders. I give thanks every morning upon awakening, every night before I go to sleep. I have the blessing and the grace to work with close to 30 elders in my journey, never ever dreaming I would be walking in their footsteps. I've been elder at BC Women and Children's Hospital for seven years and counting. I've given service to well over 3,000 families and counting each and every week. I've been elder with the Aboriginal Patient Navigator Program with Vancouver Coastal Health. So I go into Vancouver General, Lionsgate, the Hope Center for the youth and the adults. Elder with Providence Healthcare with our beautiful, beautiful Indigenous team there. So I go into St. Paul's and Mount St. Joseph's, given service to more than 1,600 families in those hospitals. I go many, many times into the mental wellness wards of all those hospitals. Many, many times I go in to lift up the heart, lift up the spirit, make that connection. Sometimes I'm able to share my story very, very gently. I've been there. I've been there. Sometimes I get that connection. Sometimes I get that smile. When I say, hey, Elder Roberta was a pretty hard nut to crack close to 30 elders in my journey. Not one of those elders ever gave up on Elder Roberta, just like I'm not gonna give up on you. So I hold my hands up to those beautiful elders 
from all the four directions that lived here in BC that took good care of Elder Roberta and all the other people who needed that unconditional love. I want to share some teachings of the beautiful elders that I work with from our Coast Salish ancestors. And I'll share the teachings first, then I'll call you each out of your comfort zone to join Elder Roberta in honoring this beautiful time together. For many, many years, I work with our Musqueam elder, Vince Stogan, right alongside our Tsleil-Waututh elder, Bob George, those two beautiful, beautiful elders working alongside each other amongst the beautiful, beautiful elders that I knew and loved and worked with. Elder Vince and Elder Bob, their teachings are, and all of our elders' teachings are, that whenever we come together, we must share a blessing and a prayer for our time together. Because what happens in that blessing and the prayer? It covers our thoughts, covers our words, it covers our interactions together. In that blessing and the prayer, I'll always honor and follow Elder Vince's teachings. Elder Vince teaches us that we will be in a circle. So lovely that we have round tables today. We can do it around our tables. Elder Vince teaches us when we're in that blessing and the prayer, when we're in that circle, what we do is we're going to join hands. And when we join those hands, Elder Vince teaches us that we put our left palm up to our person on our left. That left palm up is to Father Sky. We put our right palm down to our person on our right. That right palm down is to Mother Earth. Elder Vince's other teachings are that our left palm up is to all of our ancestors. We're calling upon and calling down in the prayers to be amongst us as we work, play, interact. Our right palm down is to our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. When we join hands in that way, we're keeping those connections very, very strong. And I want to share with you that it is Elder Roberta's gift to call upon the ancestors of every single person in the room. So if you have a warm feeling around you for the rest of the day, if it lasts for even a few days, your ancestors are there. They love you. They're so proud of you. They are happy for you for the life you're living, for the work you're doing. So they might hang around and give you that warm, warm feeling for today and for a few days yet to come. So I'll ask you each now, and folks, if you're not, there's not enough room around your table, go and join another table to jump so you can fit in joining hands. And as you stand up, I want to share that I was pretty confused when I met my elders. Sometimes I didn't know my right from my left. OCM, OCM. So we'll just give folk. Oh no, that's okay. That's okay. So we'll just give folks that just joined us a minute to join our circles. Thank you, folks, and welcome. Very, very welcome. So if everyone's ready, we'll say a blessing and a prayer for our time together today. Haichka. Haichka Osiem, Osiem. We give you many, many thanks, Creator, for bringing us together in such a warm, respectful, and loving circle in our conference. We ask, Creator, that you bless anyone who's away due to illness or other obligations. Bless the ones yet to come. Help them to arrive safely. We call upon you, Creator, to bring your blessings down upon our minds, our hearts, our bodies, our spirits. So when we think our thoughts, they are good, positive, and respectful. When we speak our words, they are good, positive, and respectful. We call upon you, Creator, to bless all the people who have prepared the food, delivered the food, and taken care of the food and drink that goes into our bodies on our journeys to wellness and strength. 
We call upon you, Creator, to bless all the shared teachings, all the shared learnings, all the shared interactions that will go on in our beautiful time together today. We kindly and respectfully ask you, Creator, to cover us each with your warm blanket of protection as we journey through this part of the journey of our lives together. We ask, Creator, that you keep us safe and travel, both near and far. We always give you many, many thanks, Creator, as we ask you to bring all of your blessings down upon the hurting, the hungry, and the homeless, and especially the hurting, Creator. Haichka, haichka osiam, osiam. Thank you so much, everyone. And I just want to share one more teaching. In the Coast Salish Territory, in the Coast Salish Longhouse, when we want to say thank you and honor, we put our palms up in the air in front of us. Some of my Squamish elders have said, put it at your heart level, because you're putting your heart into your thank you. And you can copy Elder Roberta. We say, Haichka. Thank you. You guys are wonderful this morning. Someone comes and does an honorable, honorable deed. We put our palms up in the air again. We really want to share our honor. We say, Haichka O Siam. Siam, it means matriarch, it means leader, it means someone who's done an honorable, honorable deed, honorable, honorable work. So I raise my hands up to each and every one of you this morning for the work you do out in the communities. I say, Haichka. Haichka OCM, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Roberta. I always feel this uh, warm feeling when Elder Roberta speaks and shares her wisdom, so we absolutely appreciate you starting our day together in this good way and helping us be grounded so we can have a productive day together. As one of the objectives of today is to support you with networking, we have uh, informal opportunities during mealtimes and the wine and cheese online through tweeting and to break the ice, we're gonna have a little short activity right now. So I would like you to take one minute to turn to someone at your table hopefully that you do not know, introduce yourself and share with them why you chose to come to this conference today. Go. All right, that was a very quick 60 seconds. Shh. Oh, there you go. All right, I would like us to wrap up our one minute conversation. Clearly we have lots to talk about and I'm sure you'll be connecting with each other as the conference day moves along. Now, let's go guys, quiet down. Oh. What do I talk to my Keep tapping until they stop. Wow. That that was interesting. Okay, so now we're going to move forward with today's morning. 
Now I would like to invite Dr. Tom Noseworthy to the stage, which he's already here, excellent, uh, to provide some welcoming remarks. Tom is the President and CEO of BC Academic Health Sciences Network, and let's join us to um, share your welcoming remarks. Patients, family and friend caregivers, special guests, ladies and gentlemen, and colleagues and friends. Um, Ella Roberta, you do indeed lift up our hearts today. We thank you. Uh, what a wonderful event. Um, I'm sure we all feel that, um, and we've just started. Uh, on behalf of the board of the British Columbia Academic Health Science Network um, and our management, our staff, I'm delighted to bring you greetings and say hello. Uh, I'm happy to report that the BC support unit is alive and well, and so too is Clinical Trials BC and Research Ethics BC as the backbone of BC's health research system grows and evolves. It's been a wonderful experience uh, as we have seen all of this develop. About, about 10 years ago, uh, in a place that I often visit, and, and in a late evening, I got into a conversation with a dear colleague who's no longer with us, who began to talk to me about strands of thinking that had been around for a long time in terms of patient-centeredness, patient-focused care, what have you, and began to speak about um, the early thoughts that he and others shared at that time over a decade ago about how to take patient engagement and patient involvement to an entirely different level. A level that was so far beyond what we were currently doing that really, really did try to breathe the essence of by patients and with patients. And as he explained that to me, I perhaps thought it was a little bit of a pipe dream sounded like there was features that were a little unrealistic. Seemed like the politics of the health system uh, and the circumstances and the attitudes might never get to what he was trying to explain to me. And if he were here now, and if he could see this, he would say, we've started, and indeed we have. I, perhaps through rose-colored glasses, believe that the strategy for patient-oriented research has passed the inflection point. On the other hand, you know as well as I do that there are uncertainties and choppy waters ahead. But I don't think any longer in this country we need to question the importance, the relevance, the value, or the impact of patient involvement in the health system. Whether it's for research, knowledge management, or anything else. Now behind me there's a large hook with my name on it that many controls. And um, I don't have any speaking notes, but I could speak with you about this for hours, and I will not. What I, what I would want to just say in closing is that the British Columbia Academic Health Science Network is delighted that we are part 
of this movement in Canada. And this movement has to be pan-Canadian. It's not only about British Columbia. We'll have our own unique interpretations in our own province. And each province is different right now, which perhaps is something that we need to pay more attention to, not to drive standardization, but to have a higher level of harmonization and integration of what we're doing across the country. I guess the final thing I would want to say is this. We have learned an awful lot in the last 10 years about patient engagement and patient involvement in research, knowledge management, and what have you. But even as that has been the case, there's simply no question about the fact there's far more we do not know than that which we do know. On a table where there's an economist at the end who's constantly concerned about the allocation of resources and their distribution, uh, I'm very mindful that time is a resource. In fact, if you're really honest with yourself, it trumps money. Because it's the most valuable thing that you have of your own. And for a moment, if I just conceptualize patient engagement and involvement as the most valuable resource that a person can give back to the health system, their time, then I'm saying, thinking, as Sterling would have me think, use it wisely, think of it as a valuable resource that's not unlimited in supply, and figure out where best that the patient voice can be heard in such a way that the system is better off. So that's why you're here, and that feels really good. And these two people have helped it happen. And this is good stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. At this time, I would like to ask Minnie Downey, BC Support Unit's Executive Director, and Sterling Bryan, Unit's uh, Scientific Director, to provide some welcoming remarks. Just being mindful of time is of the essence, so if we can keep our um, remarks to brief, that would be great. Good morning. What a level of energy here to stay here. Have a seat. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good morning. What a level of energy that we have in the room here today. It was two years ago in this exact room that we had our first conference, and each year continues to grow. The BC Support Unit is a network, and all of you are a part of our network. There has been much accomplished in, in BC and in Canada, uh, with respect to advancing patient-oriented research. And it's through the work of each of you that have made that happen. I express thanks to people that have uh, come from outside of BC to be with us here today, so thank you very much. And also to all people from BC that have taken time from your work to come and be at our conference today. We try to remove as many barriers as possible so that you can attend. So I would like to acknowledge our funding partners. Uh, we have Canadian Institute for Health Research. Um, Nancy Mason McLennan is with us here today as one of our funding partners, as well as BC Ministry of Health and Michael Smith Foundation. So it's through their cash contributions that we are able to offer this conference to you. I also wanna say thanks to Pat Atherton, who is the uh, lead for this conference, and to her team for putting together a great program for you guys um, for today. Thank you all for the... <laughs> Thank you all for the work that you do, and have an enjoyable day. 
Great, thanks. Um, sorry, I'm going to have to stand because I can't speak without standing. So, wow, like this is just amazing. Like to see so many people here, over 400 people, like three to four years ago, if we thought that we could, could host an event like this, we would have been so excited. Um, so I'd like patient partners to raise their hand. So if you're a patient partner, please raise your hand and keep your hand raised. And I just want to say a huge thank you for everyone for coming. So one of the things I, so I have, I have two boys, uh, no grandchildren yet, um, but uh, two boys. And one of the things that my boys like get sick of me uh, saying is, it's good to be outside of your comfort zone. So I was pleased that that phrase was used earlier by uh, Elder Roberta. Thank you for that. Um, and I think like, one of the things that patient partners do is keep us outside of our comfort zone. And I think that's the, what, that's, that for me is the place that we want to be. For me, wearing a fancy tie is outside of my comfort zone. Um, <laughs> Patient partners engaging in health research, I'm sure, is outside of your comfort zone at times as well. But please keep doing it because it forces researchers to be outside of their comfort zone. And I think that's exactly where we want to be. So in many ways, I, I wish you a, a day of being outside of your comfort zone. I think that will happen at times. I hope it's not the whole day, but I hope that there are parts of the day where that's happening. And uh, I wish you a good day and, uh, and, and an enjoyable day and a day of, of learning. So thank you very much for being here.